No. Start at verse 22 for me. 22. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 22. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, for my own, for my holy name's sake, which ye have not, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, said Yahweh Elohim, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes, who take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be, and I will be your Elohim. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call for the corn, and I will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall you remember your own evil ways, that were not good, and shall loaf yourselves in your own sight for your iniquity and for your abomination. Not for your not for your sake do I this, said Yahweh Elohim. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. And anytime we find our own ways and find ourselves in the midst of our own ways and we correct it for we should be ashamed. Yes, sir. We should be greatly ashamed. Go ahead. Thus, thus said Yahweh Elohim, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the city, and the waste shall be builded, and the desolate land shall be tilled. Desolate land shall be tilled. Whereas, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. Whereas for a long time, in the sight of everybody that passed by it, it lay desolate. And they shall say, but when I do this, when I return you, when I restore you, they shall say of the heathens and you yourself, what shall you say? This land. This land. That what was, land? That was desolate. The land that was desolate. The land that he returned us to. The what land? The it's land of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, sir. The promised land. Hallelujah. This land. The land that he believed in, the land that he consecrated from creation all the way back to Adam. This land has what? It's become like the Garden of Eden. It had become like it was in creation. It had become as rich like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and the desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. And it's been built back up. Hallelujah. Because that region is where the original Garden of Eden was at. That's why it's special. That's why he promised it to the righteous. That's why he promised it to Abraham. That's why he's always saying it must be and you must be, when you're there, you must be holy. Because this is holy turf. Hallelujah. This ain't just some 
place I picked out, this is holy. This has been established from the beginning of time my eye have been on this. This is the land I spouse man and push man out of when he went the wrong way. This is the place I took him away from. See, it's there. Everybody looking for that garden. It's there. It's just right now. Everybody passed by it because the condition is in. Just like Israel. It's there. He's there. But everybody passed by him. Rosley Elders. By Salam. Everybody passes by him, but he's there. But they pass by him because of the what? His condition he in. Yeah. He's as a dead man. So they pass by him. You ain't Israel. Get out of here. Them the Jew. See, when the Almighty is revealing these things, just like you said, I'll make a new heaven and a new earth. Well, ain't that planet gonna blow up? Core gonna melt down and it's gonna blow up. This planet ain't going nowhere. It's new. And what is new is the state and the condition that it's in. To the people that will see it. Question, all right. Yes. Um, Hold on to it, then. Okay. And then finish this 36th verse. Oh, yeah. Then the heathen that are left round about you. Should know that I Yahweh built the ruined places. He says, then the nations will know that I Yahweh built the ruin. I built the ruined places. And plant that that was desolate. I plant that which was desolate. I Yahweh has spoken it. Uh -huh. And I will do it. Yes. Thus said Yahweh Elohim. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. To do it for them, mm -hmm. I will increase them with men like a flock, mm -hmm. as the holy flock, as a holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem, as the flock of Jerusalem, and, and her solemn feast. feast. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, mm -hmm. and they shall know that I am Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a question. It actually answered. It. Right, that's <laughs> Hallelujah. So my question was, I was going to ask, do we even say we're going to return back home? Or we always say we're returning back home to Jerusalem. But in this script, I'm, 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 really, I'm saying that we actually going to be returning back to the Garden of Eden. And it will be like we was in Jerusalem. We're going to be returning back to Jerusalem. But Jerusalem... Is, a, is the place that the Almighty said his heart was at. Okay. And Jerusalem is in the midst. That's why I said Jerusalem is in the midst of that region. See, that region is what Genesis gives you the clue to. That whole region is not pinpointing to just saying a country. Okay. Egypt or put or look or this. The Almighty looked at a certain Land mass. And when he looked at that land mass, he said, That's mine. That's the glory of all land. That's the that land right there. Because you get ancient maps, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna put a center dot right in the land of Cain. I got a rendering of one is three circles. And in that middle circle, in the heart of that middle circle, is the region. And in the heart of that is what we know as the land of Canaan, the soul journey of our forefathers. Hold your question, and we're going to get it.
That's why the Almighty, and look at what he said now. Now, remember the waters and how they parted off. That's the whole That's the whole region. And how great do you think the waters was? Great. They were great. Yeah. They were life giving because they gave life to what? They gave life to what? Everything. Earth. Life. Earth. Earth. But particularly the Garden of Eden. Yeah. The Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Now them waters were that great. Now watch what the Almighty said in Ezekiel 47. And write the question down, sister, so I can, I can get it. Ezekiel chapter 47. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And he said in the Garden of Eden, he said he put many what? Now I want to see if y'all be staying with me. Y'all be tuning me out. He said in the Garden of Eden, he put many what? Don't mind if I take down the. Uh, uh, in the Garden of Eden, there were many. Plant. Plants. There were many. Beasts. Creatures. Who said that? Trees. Yes, sister. Yes, you're right. There were many trees that you could eat all around the Garden of Eden. But in the midst thereof was the trees. The edible trees was all around in abundance. Huh? Yeah. All around us in abundance. Because that's what he told him. He said, there's trees all around in abundance, and that is what you eat off of. That's food. But in the midst is two trees that I don't want you to mess with yet. And that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Because you're ill-equipped. And the truth of the Almighty is bear witness today. Yes, sir. The not man having the knowledge of good and evil, he ill-equipped. Yes, because once he gets the knowledge of good and evil, ultimately and invariably, he always tends to lean towards the side of evil. evil. Even with his knowledge. Of good. of good. That he can do more good in the earth, he'll take it and tune it to doing evil and wickedness. See, people won't believe it. They have cures for diseases that people are suffering from. But with their wickedness, they make more money off of keeping you and I what? Sick than they would off of giving you the cure. Yes, sir. Our hospitals can't grow. Our coffers can't grow. We can't get enrolled. So why restore you? But they have the knowledge. They have the knowledge. But the trees in the midst, that's what he told us, of knowledge of good and evil. Because those forces have always been. And you have to learn how to let good defeat evil. That's why the little shows they have. And it's a natural thing. They, if you exist, those forces exist. And why in the little shows they have? Y'all ever seen them shows? They got the little person yes, with a good thing side of them sitting up here on this shoulder. Yeah, and you don't want to do that. Do <laughs> and then on this shoulder, it'll pop up a little dude. He, no, let's do it. That's what that's representing. <laughs> there's a constant struggle. If you exist, there's a constant struggle. There's a constant pull between what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. Now, the 
one that's down the center to guide us to what's right is the most high himself because he know man need guidance. So that's why he said, you're to make me the center focus of your life so that I can always guide you towards that path of good and keep you away from that which is evil because both of them exist. And then he said, along with that, is a tree of life. And he know, he really know, with our pitiful self. We ain't in no condition to partake Amen. of eternal life. But all these trees around us were the trees that we could partake from. You got Ezekiel 47? Yes, sir. Now read, let's read that. Start oh, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1. Afterward, he brought me again into the door of the house, and behold, waters is, and waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. Now what house? He wasn't talking about Ben Mama's house. Or Uncle Joe's house. What house? What house is this? John's tabernacle. Huh? John. This is y'all's house. That's right. When it's rebuilt. When it's put back together. The house that glorifies and holds his name. The greatest house ever on the face of y'all's green earth. When this house is built. And where is it going to be built at? We, I'm trying to get us to connect the dots. Where are you going to build it at? You're going to build it at the place most what to who? Most special to the Almighty. That's right. In the land most special to the Almighty. In the region most special to the Almighty. Let's go. For the forefront of the house Stood toward the east. Stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. Mm -hmm. Then brought he me out the way of the gate northward. Yes. And led me about the way without unto the other gate, mm -hmm. by the way that looked eastward. Mm -hmm. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the the waters were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. So as you as you walked out, it's like swimming pool. As you walk out. The waters got higher. They get higher. First, it was at the, I could walk through. He could walk through it, and it was at his ankle. Now he's with another thousand cubits, cubits and it got to his knees. Go ahead. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. Where to the the waters were to the loins. Afterward, to, to the loins now. Afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river. That I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in. Now I can swim in them. A river that could not be passed over. A river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now, when I have returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issues out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed, and it shall come to pass that everything 
things that live it, which move it, whithersoever the river, whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish. That's the other thing I want you to get. Then one of the rivers that issued out of the Garden of Eden, then they said it ran towards the east, yeah. towards Assyria. Yeah. And then another one, guess where it ran? When it broke off. That's why it says in four heads. So where the one of the other ones, if one ran towards the east, where the one of the other ones run towards? West. And where the one of the other ones run towards? The north. And where the one of the other ones go towards? The south. Hello. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Till they empty out and they ran in tributaries to these rivers, emptied out into seas. Into seas. seas empty out into oh. oceans. Same thing they do today. Oh, There's God. nothing new under the sun. Oh, Streams empty out into something else. Brooks empty out into something else. All tributary, all waters empty out into another source and then into another source and then into another source until they get to a great body of water. Just like waters in the firmament go up and come back down. Yes, Ellen. Uh, ain't no new water. Ain't no new water. Oh, it, it's just that constant, that flow. That flow. Go ahead. Because these waters shall come thither, but they shall be healed, and everything shall live whether the river cometh, and it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from in Indi even unto in even unto in Eglaim, they shall be a place to spread forth net. Their fish shall be according to their kind, as the fish of the great sea exceedingly many. As you can throw your net in there and catch, I don't know what. Abundance of fish. For abundance. <laughs> Just, just when you, I mean, you ain't even, it ain't like you go fit and then you be sitting, <laughs> you just throw it out there, you, hey, Jack, you, hey, Shalom, time for the net in, ah, ah, throw it back out again, just, just, ah, all oh, abundance of healthy fish, flapping and just everything. I ain't talking about picking up something. You look at it and uh, better throw that back. No. <laughs> Healthy. Fresh. Wild cock. Oh, God. Yeah. Have, the, have the waters of health flowing through it. Flowing through it. This is what, this is what you eating. Oh, you eating God. live things. Yeah. So you are alive. Life. Beginning life. Not like today, even the most the good things we can eat, they still dead because of the way they are produced, the way they are handled, the way they are given. So they are producing a deteriorated step. Yeah. Yes, even sir. amongst vegetables. Yes, sir. The people running around don't get so haughty. Yeah. I don't touch that no more. Right. If you touching anything and your hands ain't been the master producer of it. I guarantee you, it's got some problems. That's it. I don't care what they slap on the box, the bag, or whatever. Hallelujah. If my hands ain't been the master producer of it, and like I said, I soar the soil now. Like I said, I have farmed for two years straight, and the earth haven't yielded her increase. So I know, and I ain't changed my tactics, I ain't changed my techniques. I know it's a couple of things that's wrong. Yes, and that's either the seeds or the soil. And there's something wrong there. Because yeah. you got a company. Yeah. You got a company who done bought up all original seeds. Yeah. And now they're putting out a seed that they manufactured and that they went in the lab and put together. And they're putting out a seed and they put out seeds so it can resist this kind of bug. It can resist that kind of bug. It can only grow to be this size. It can only grow to be that size. It only give you one generation. It only do this, but they have cornered the market on seed. Yes, That's sir. why the United States government had a lawsuit from black farmers and from the farmers, period, 
in Iowa, in Missouri, they had a lawsuit against them because they came out and they had planted crops of corn. And they came out and they started noticing my corn ain't the corn that I planted. Well, the same company bought up land around them, planted this franken corn. And when this franken corn pollinated, yeah. Blew in the wind, got cross pollinated. Now their corn had the residue of it in it. So they said, they sued them, said, You have tainted our corn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just kicking in their doors like they had like pounds of dope in their houses. So when the Almighty said they have polluted everything. This is what he means. And this is why he says, I must restore you in every way. This is, this is a whole program. When you go back, Everything must be, the earth must be restored. That's why the earth is rebelling. I won't tell you that six months from now, you're going to be in the midst of an exodus. Twelve months from now, you're going to be in the, but it's coming. And the signs of it is the almighty people, but the signs of it is the earth. The earth herself. Like Moses said, again, this is why they don't want you to read and understand this. Moses never said, well, I got this group of people. I got this man that can talk about you. I got that man that can talk about you. Moses always came to the children of Israel and he said, two witnesses. He didn't say it's me and a lot. He said, I got two witnesses. I got heaven. I got earth. Because these are two things, even though they might be tainted, you're still never all the way influenced. Man can influence another man. Uh, that's right. He can influence another man. Judges are influenced every day. But those two things, as much as you want to taint them, you'll never have overall influence over them. And they're going to only accept so much before they start to rebel. And that's why our storms are greater, our calamities are greater, and they're going to get worse because it's rebelling. It's called rebellion. As man has rebelled against creation, so must creation return the favor and rebel against man until it straighten itself out. That's why you have, that's why at the same time, fire on one coast and ice on another yeah. at the same time. Failed to mention it just a couple of weeks ago. How many found out about the 4.4 earthquake that hit in Tennessee, Kentucky, and Georgia? That's how far it could be felt through Tennessee, Kentucky, and Georgia. A 4.4 magnitude earthquake. Looking at the news last night, the Almighty is, they like said, he's terrible in his works toward the children of men. The fires may have been put out and stopped burning. But now California got a whole nother problem. And that's the residue of what the fire left over because many of things that got burnt up now are poisoning the atmosphere and the air. So they got people in hazmat suits and they're trying to go through 300 houses a day to clear out hazardous material that's seeping into the air and that's seeping into the water source. And the water source that is seeping into starts from the top of California and the river, the way it runs, it runs all the way down to the tip. 
down to the southern tip of Cal. So you're talking about the whole tributaries being affected. The Almighty's gonna have his way. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, brother. <laughs> huh? 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 He gonna have his way. Huh? Whether you want to acknowledge him or not. One thing I'm finding, he gonna have his way. And you can't question him. You can't fight him. You can't resist him. You can't do nothing. He gonna have his way. And like the old people just say, look, here's your choice. You can pay me now or you can pay me later. But you gonna pay me. That's his decree. You can pay me now. <laughs> Willfully. Oh, get your act together. Oh, or you can pay me later. Oh, when I come with fury. Fire and flame. Full rebuke. No correction. Just full rebuke. But you're going to pay me. You gonna pay me with your soul one way or the other, and your spirit one. You gonna give it to me one way or the other, through submission or through annihilation. Now many people are choosing annihilation, annihilation <laughs> yes, sir. instead of submission. But understand, we gonna pay. Go back to forty-seven, brother. Yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter 47. Read that verse 10 again. Verse 10. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it mm -hmm. from in to die, even unto in a line. There shall be a place, they shall be a place to spread forth net. Their fish shall be according to their kind. As the fish of the great sea, they exceeding got, many. They don't even have to struggle when they fish. Mm. Go ahead. But the merry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. Mm -hmm. They shall be given to salt. So, ew. See, now my don't change nothing. The merry places and the marshes, they still must be there. Because the Almighty still know in creation how he created things. You still have fresh water, but you still need a place for salt water. Can't just have all fresh water. There must be a place for fresh water. But there must be a place for the salt water to reside. And that's why he said these places won't be touched. Because that's what that's for. To bring that balance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So leave that salt water there. But go ahead. Verse 12. And by the river, upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side. So by the, this river, by the fresh water, by the river where the fresh water is at, on this side of the banks and on that side of the banks is what? She'll grow all trees. She'll grow how many kind of trees? All trees. All kind of trees. For meat. For what? For meat. For meat. That don't mean uh, lambs hanging off of it when it said meat in the scripture <laughs> like that. Chickens hanging off the trees. That ain't what it's talking about. When it said meat, meat is often referred to or used, you're going to eat meat like a nut. Some people call them the inside of the nut. They call that meat. You ain't never heard of that? Yeah. They call it meat. Because you eat. So that's what he's saying. These trees are going to be trees, all kinds of trees that have things, food that's hanging off of that you can eat. So that's what he mean by it's going to be meat for you. Who's on this what? side of the bank. On oh, who's we? On this side of the bank. Yes, sir. And on that side of the bank. <coughs> when we put that back with the Garden of Eden, then he say all the what? All, all the trees. Around what? The, Lord. the whole what? The whole region. You could what? That whole garden, you could what? You could eat. Just don't go into the midst thereof. Because in the midst thereof is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in the midst thereof is the tree of eternal what? 
Right. Life. But now, this the only deviation from that. We will be in the midst of the tree. We will be in the heart. And we will, at this time, be given an important that path to eternal life because Yahweh is with us and he is eternal life. Hallelujah. So that's taken care of now. That's why all this goodness is here. Because he that is life, he is in the midst of the righteous. He is in the midst of them who deserve the right to the tree of life and life wow. eternal. He's the one. He's the one that even Christ said to St. John. And this is life eternal. That they might know that thou, you, didn't say me, didn't say us, that thou alone are the Elohim over all the earth. That that's life eternal. To know that. But on this side of the bank, on that side of the bank, are all trees for food, and whose leaf is what? Shall not fade. You will not fade. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. The fruit thereof won't be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. According to months. Because it is sprout. Fruit just brought out. Whoop, 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 whoop. Wow. Huh? Here we go to strawberry. Oh, yeah. Here go to blueberry. There go to figs. Yeah. There go this. There go that. Wow, they ran. Look at it. Wow, they're coming over there. The summer fruits, the winter fruits. They come. Wow. Ooh. Huh. Fruit just fruit every month. Hmm? So that's still a deal. The trees don't bear fruit just all year round. And what I said, they see, he happily went to the tree and didn't find no fruit. He didn't know what season he was in. It wasn't time for the tree to bear fruit. The tree down there where I'm farm at is bare. It's planting season for us to plant certain things, but it's bare. You have to wait. You, is that right, son? Huh? You're looking at me like you're 14 care crazy. <laughs> asking me. You down with is that right? Yeah, I'm lost. <laughs> okay, maybe you, I'm gonna test. <laughs> take my advice. <laughs> they 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 bored. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. We with you, all right. Oh yes. Come on, bro. They eat your free for fruit, new fruit. According to his months, because their waters they issue out of the sanctuary. Because the waters come, the waters, the waters of healing, the living waters, they issue right out of the sanctuary. They come out of the house of Yah. Oh, God. Where he be, wow. where he at, where his presence is at, where he is at. The waters come, that's their gym. They start right out of there. Like I said, where life eternal is. And they flow out. And you can walk through them. You got psoriasis or something, eczema on your ankle. You walk through that water. You ain't got no more. Oh, yeah. You got a scab on your knee. You get to the knee, you don't have it no more. Oh, God. That's why they. That's why people flying. I told y'all over and over again. There was a story. Actually, I saw a girl had a terrible skin disease. They were doing all kinds of treatments on her over here in the state. It was right in the city. All kind of topical creams and rubbing it on, and it just kept growing and growing and deteriorating. And the lady, the mother said, somebody came and told her, said, "Why don't you take a trip to Israel?" And take her to the Jordan. 
and the mother mustered up all the money. She could say, mustered it up. And they jumped on the plane, her and the daughter, and they flew over to Israel. And she took her to Jordan River, the Jordan River. And they put her in the Jordan River. They brought her up. They did this for a period. This was a treatment, and they did it for a period of time. They started to see the flesh return, start healing. They started healing. They also took about 40 samurai. You know samurai, they them the big factory for a guy. And they put them on the river. Now they was expecting them to what? Sink. Them jokers was on the river just, and I'm not talking about they were swimming. They was on top of the water just floating. Just floating. That Jordan River. Still had the same, what you say, Elder? Ain't nothing new under the sun. It still had the same property that it had and always have had. That's another reason why John the Baptist, who was in the city, dumped people in the Jordan River. He did so because it was clear what they thought of ritual. Purification and cleansing, but also healing. The Jordan River was always a source and a powerful source in the land of our people. That's the river we crossed over. That's the river that separated one side from another yeah. side. Yes, and Moses said, when you cross, now the rest of y'all go over with your brothers and help them take the land on this side of Jordan. Then you come back and enjoy your inheritance. But that Jordan River was always a special river. But the creator says here in Ezekiel 47, verse 12, he said, the waters will issue out the sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat. The fruit of the tree shall be for meat. And the leaf thereof for medicine. And the leaf thereof for medicine. See, even when you're dealing in herbs and herbology, you got to know the right thing. It ain't a matter of just eating something and it's going to hear you. Because the whole property that you're trying to get might not be out of what you eat. Like corn again. I go back to corn. I can eat corn on the cob. But the truth of the matter is, the corn, the kernels ain't going to give me the property that I'm looking for. But in the silk, that's why there's a tea you can make called corn, and the herb is called corn silk. That's where you take that hairy stuff, put that in the water, you boil that, it gives you a lime green colored water. And corn silk is good for things like kidneys, bladder. Down in those areas. Oh, yeah. Because it's the leaf. You can even take the leaf itself and wrap things with it. Like Doc said. Misconception that they were just smoking what people like to smoke today. <laughs> but they also smoked, they also wrapped and smoked in their pipes spearmint, wintergreen, because these things helped with things that had to do with the lungs. No different than if you got a condition today when you're sick today. When I when my sinuses all, often open up, here's my go to carry it around with me, take the top off, close this, close this, goes all the way down, starts clearing out. This is what their medicine is based on. You can get you a, one of the little things where you boil the water, 
dash in, towel over your head, hold it over, let the aroma come up, and it's going to flow through all the body. See, these the old remedies that they done told us to move away from. Come back to them. And they recall the medicine off the top shelf like I don't know what. Ross Williams. And like I said, I am not anti-doctor. I'm not anti-hospital. I'm not none of that. Because it's something you have to go. You have to go there. You can't self-treat yourself. You can't. But then you don't give all of yourself over as well when you do when your care is in your hands. You don't just give yourself over to folks that don't know you completely. Because they don't know you. You have to have people invested in you. Because a lot of times, and I'm not I know it because I've been there too many times. And it's not nothing against them. You another case. You know what I mean? People on the floor that they got, I know it because, like I said, I've been there with my son. The nurses running. I sometimes I tell them, and they they be like, Mr. they be like, you too. I say, girl, I say, especially at night. Cause I cut the lights off. I say, girl, sit down. Sit down. Take the load off. They be running from room to room to room. To room. I said, sit down, man. And I got a lot. They ain't going nowhere. Are you silly? <laughs> Take a break. But they have little time to be invested in you because of all huh? You know what I say, man, I need a when my brother Aaron gets sick, y'all forbid. I need a team. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, I need a team. Oh, I'll be praying, keep my mama here as long as you can. <laughs> I'll deal with everything, but I know when she hit that door, I know it's going to be right, Jack. What you doing now? You doing it? He don't like that. What you, I know it, I can lay back and go to sleep tonight. Because <laughs> I know my mother and my sister, they vested because they what? They want me to come back what? Huh? Well, I told I said, Ma, I said, my, I said, I'm going to fresh up a little bit. She done went out and bought everything she know. I got some ginger. Come back next. I got some garlic. I said, what is you doing? I got all this stuff over. Now nah, you ain't got this. That's why I don't like to tell you nothing. But they invested in me. I'm not just another case. So I need a team. And the head of the team had to be the most high. Oh, yeah. Then the others fall in the line. Because I'm very witness. When you have a team, when you have people vested in you, they're going to treat you better. Yes, sir. All right. But the Almighty said, calling that out again, the fruit thereof should be for what? For food. Be for meat and the meat thereof for medicine. Mm -hmm. Thus said Yahweh Elohim. That's why I love it, boy. And like I said, once you get over the mental part of it, you you good. Yes, sir. I love it. I've been buying that beet juice. Yeah, y'all looking like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that beet juice. I love it. Yeah, you shaking here. But that beet juice. Wait. It, it's a it's a it's a monster. Y'all bless. It's a monster. It's a monster. Huh? I'm gonna tell y'all something. Remind me. I'm gonna tell you something when that gets turned off. Cause I don't know everybody no more. But I'm gonna tell y'all. Y'all remind me. I'm gonna tell you something. All right. <coughs> and the lead thereof for medicine. Thus said Yahweh. This shall be the border whereby you shall inherit the what? The land. According to the who? Twelve tribes of Israel. According to the twelve tribes of Israel. 
and Yosef shall have what? Two portions. And he shall have two portions. And then it goes on to get in, into the land. Hallelujah. Then look at Ezekiel 20th chapter. He didn't think that Jeffrey question was going to turn all this, did you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Since they asked it, we're going to answer it from y'all's perspective. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 20. Start at verse, start at verse 1. Hallelujah. And it came to pass mm -hmm. in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of Yahweh and sat before me. Then came the word of Yahweh unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus said Yahweh, Elohim, are ye coming to inquire of me? As I live, said Yahweh, Elohim, I will not be inquired of by you. He said, they came. And they came saying they wanted to inquire of y'all. They want to know the word from y'all. He said, but y'all already knew them. He said, they don't want my word. <coughs> they don't. They don't want to. They're not here to inquire of me. Not true. Then he said in verse 4. Will thou judge them, son of man? Will thou judge them? He said, can you judge them? I'm going to let you judge them. Since they want to know. They say they're coming to inquire of me. Well, you're going to judge them, son of man. You're going to judge them. But when you judge them, this is what you're going to do for them. Call, you ain't going to make them feel good. Because that's what they really came here for. They came here for you to smooth butter on them and make them feel good. Yeah, y'all good. Y'all, y'all on. Yeah, yeah, you out of sight. Yeah, this. You're so this. You're so that. You're so great. He said, cause them to know what? The abominations. Of their fathers, cause them to know the abomination of their fathers, the things that's been plaguing them for years, and say unto them, Thus said Yahweh Elohim, in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto the sea of the house of Yaakov, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim in the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey. A land that I had espied for them that flows with milk and honey. Which is the glory of all land. It. It. Not where the Ganges is in India. Hallelujah. Not in Peru, where Tetsukawala is at. Not in Hawaii. Not in the Bahamas. Not there. Not in the Rhine River. Not there. This land that I gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. This land that I talk about all through the prophets and the Tanakh. This land. The land that I've been at since the day I created heaven and earth, the sea and all that it is. This land is the glory of all lands. Oh, it's God. the land I aspired for them when I went and introduced myself to them in the land of Egypt to bring them out. Not just to bring them out and put them in a two-bedroom apartment. I brought them out the land of Egypt to put them in a mansion. Oh, God. With everything furnished in it, brand new. Not somebody hand me down and it's gonna break in six months. No, we built this. I built this from the ground. This all new construction. Gray A1 material. This the glory of all land. Oh, my God. I did it even before there was even such a thing as the children of Israel. This is why I know it's the Garden of Eden. 
just the top of Golden Book of Deuteronomy. Uh, this is why I know it's that region. Go to the Book of Deuteronomy. We're going to put a bow on it. It ain't Christmas. We ain't celebrating Christmas, but we're going to put a bow on this. Deuteronomy 32. Hallelujah. But that's what he told the prophet Ezekiel. Now look at what he told the first prophet. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender earth, as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of Yahweh, subscribe ye greatness unto our Elohim. He is our rock. He is the rock. His work is perfect. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. They sure are. An Elohim of yeah. truth and without iniquity, just and right. That's why is he. it's good. And you got to know, I'm starting to find out, you have to get in here and you have to study this law. Oh, yeah. You have to study this law and these commandments because that's what we live in. Yes, but sir. it's been ultimate that we study and familiarize ourselves with it because not just to have the law, but because he is an Elohim of judgment. Oh, yeah. And what he judges on is his law, oh, statutes, and commandments, and oh, how you God. keep them or you don't keep them. But he is an Elohim of judgment. That's right. I can tell you he loves. I can tell you his mercy endure forever. I can tell you he's slow to anger. I can tell you all those attributes, but I can't tell you the attribute that we better understand greater than he is an Elohim of judgment. Oh, God. And as I said, what is given is coming back. That's right. He's going to judge. And the thing about it is, he come when you least, he's the thief in the night. He come when you least expect it, when you're riding so high. <laughs> Who's that knocking at my door? <laughs> well, he don't say let me in. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all saw Black Panther, yeah? Huh? You remember when he said, and brother looked out the window, he said, with two chicks, and what if dude selling? He said, you better let them in. <laughs> they gonna ask you. They ain't gonna knock again. <laughs> he ain't knocking again. He coming on in, huh? Mm -hmm. Hmm? He coming in. He's going to have a nice sit down with you. Brother Aaron. What's up? Y'all might do what he want to do. And what's up? Uh. <laughs> ain't been rough around the edges, ain't you? I'm bringing it to you. I'm bringing it to you. You know what it's about. Pay yeah. time. You know what it's about. That's what Father Abraham said. He didn't say, you the Elohim of love. <coughs> you the Elohim of compassion. He said, I know you the Elohim of justice and judgment. Oh, so I got to ask you, when you go to judge these people, will the righteous perish with the wicked? And he said, no, nah, they ain't. They're not. He said, <laughs> And I know that about you. And that's what we play in himself. We play in that part of himself. We discard in that. But I'm here to tell you today, take it from Brother Abraham. He's an Elohim of judgment. Yes, sir. Justice. Yes, sir. But he says. Go ahead again. He's an Elohim of truth without iniquity. He's just and he's right. Corruption is not his. 
but it is the effect of his children. Corruption is a perverse and of a crooked and perverse generation. And will you requite Elohim Yahweh, you foolish people and unwise? Is he not the father that have brought thee? Have he not made thee? And he established thee? Remember the days of old. He asked us this question. He wants us to do this. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you. Ask the elders, and they should be able to tell you. Then he says, when the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he gave all the nations everything, when he separated the sons of Adam, do you see how far back we're going? Yes, sir. We're going back to the beginning. When he separated the sons of Adam, that means Abel, that means Cain, that means Tubal Cain, that means Lamech. When he separated all of the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of who? Israel. And at the time of Adam, there was no children of Israel. But this is how long the Almighty had had us on his mind since the very beginning of time. Oh, God. Huh? Silah, I'm going, yeah, I'm going to let that marinate for a minute. Look at what we have given up and constantly give up. We've given up the one who had created everything. And in the beginning of his creation, he had the children of Israel on his mind. And he thought so much about them, he set the bounds of people, the sons of Adam, according to them when they were coming from him. The land was always the glory of all land, and it was always the children of Israel's inheritance in the sight of God. It was always meant for them. He said, for Yah portion is his people, and Yah Yaakov is the lot of his inheritance. Oh, yeah. That's why he found him in the desert land. And in the waste howling wilderness. And that's why he led him about. That's why he instructed him, which is what Torah means, instruction, law. That's why he instructed him. And that's why he kept him as the apple of his eye. Oh, God. And no matter what, he still is today. Oh, God. So, if one wants to know the important rivers, it's the river that ran out the Garden of Eden, out of that region. It's the river that runs from and flows from the Almighty Yah Himself. It's not another river. There's not another river like it on the face of the earth. Any comments? Let me ask you, uh, <clears throat> is this the reason why so called Jews want to control that land? Yes. So they basically land claim to something that they don't really have claim to. Well, not only them, that's why all men want the land. Not only the land, they want their, like I said, yeah. you talk about land, country, but they want their, people want their region. That's why I said region. See, like it made sense of it the other day. Don't get it twisted. There's a reason why they don't, I don't know what them two lame brains done said to each other, but there's a reason why all of a sudden uh, he want to pull that, uh, Trump want to pull out of Syria. 
after having a, me a meeting with Putin. Right. Now he want to pull out a series. See, the almighty is, let these things be written. Oh, I want to get out of here now. <laughs> well, they had a firm hold in it. Well, Putin, evidently, there's something there that he got. Either he got something on him, or he got something that he wants. Probably a little bit of both. But it's enough, whatever it is, it's enough to get him to move. Because what my man said is, get out of there. Because I got a foothold in there. And he does, because he's an ally with the Syrian government. So he's so what he's saying is, we want that region. It ain't just the Edomite. Every, that's why I told you earlier. Everybody. See, understand what the Almighty saying. When he divided this, he gave this to Israel. So every man, every people have been jealous and want that. Ain't just no one. Everybody covet that. Because they know it. They know what it is. They know everything. If you have knowledge, they know everything about that region that is fertile. That's why it was called in that something. It was called Mesopotamia there. It was called the Fertile Crescent. Samaria, everybody talking about, I'm an Egyptian. Egyptian. And there was there places that had risen and fell long before Egypt. What about the Sumerian culture? What about the Akkadian culture? What about all the cultures that have come up and fell before there was even an established Egyptian culture? But they came and they prospered in what they call the Fertile Crescent, that region. Very ancient Babylon. Ur of Chaldees, which Abraham came out of. All oh, that region. You control that region. You have a foothold on the world. You control that region strategically. You can make war everywhere. That's why they set them up. That's what Obadiah is talking about. That's why they set up a Jewish state. So he can be my eyes, my ears, and my hands so far away where I can't get to. But that's why people link. Israel and America, and they link them together, and they say they're both devils. That's why Islam will continue, will put them both together and say they're both devils. That's why the Crusades was fought for the Holy Land. English, French, Islam, Christendom versus Islam. We vanquished at this time, so we ain't even a major player. So that's why we ain't in the game. <laughs> but everybody want a piece. Everybody want this land that's promised. Now, my brother wrote the question the other week. That's why I said, no, the covenant is only for the Almighty people. And he that will join himself to the Almighty people. That land, you'll never know. You'll never understand, man. This is the Almighty. You'll never, we, our people will never know how special Yahweh is to us, and they'll never know how special that land is to us. Truth be told, we can never get right spiritually, physically, any other kind of way. Till we go back to that land. That's what all this we read today has been telling us. That's why I said, then will I cleanse you. Sprinkle water on you. And you'll be clean. Because that's what I had to do anyway. When you come to the land, I have to sprinkle water. The clean water. Water that washes away impurity. Because that's what water does. Water cleanses. That's why the first world. That's why the flood. That's why he used that. Because water cleanses. Water washes away. Got a pot that's stubborn. 
soak it in the water. It's going to break it up. Water cleanses. And that's what he said with these, with the waters of y'all, I'm going to cleanse every, everything. You wash, you shower, you bathe yourself, you run down the buildings and you get dumped, but you still come up with residue. Um, like when you come out the shower, that hard water. You be scratching nowadays when you come out the shower. I just took a bath. I'm going to be itching like this. Now, He's talking about water that cleanses you of everything. All ailments, physically, mentally, spiritually. That's the baptism of God. That's the cleansing of God. Was that part of the biblical writing that you see in him with the America pulling out of pulling out of that country over there, they're pulling out that part of the biblical. Yes, because it's got to show something. Yes, it is because it's going to it's going to destabilize. See, that's why I said this can be for me. This can be talked about on the Saturday because it's the word of Yah. Because it's going to destabilize the whole region. If I if y'all don't do nothing today, write down region. Region. Stop talking about just when it say land. Yes, land, but it's talking about region. And that pulling out. See, everything has cause and effect. It's going to destabilize. So you'll have more war. You'll have more people fighting. And by pulling out, it's going to bring them in a roundabout manner. It's going to bring them right back in. Huh? That's why. That's why when we're talking about wisdom. This is all a facade. For peace on earth. Peace on earth, the wheel toward men. You sing all the carols you want to. <laughs> it's all a lie. How much peace can it be? You can't even put a box on your porch. Right. Can't even lay a box on your porch. How much peace is that? Three cases, peace just run up on porch. That. It's all the Almighty is going to expose it. And, I, and that's what I want to do. A lot of people, they won't see it. They won't see it. But the Almighty, we should, we should, today, my brother said down there, we should clap. We should start clapping right now. We should clap with the top. And mean it. Oh, God. You should be clapping. And mean it. You should give a great thank you shout out to y'all. Yes, man. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Because y'all did something marvelous each and every one of our lives. Yes, he did a great, he did a great act. Yes, that we probably done walked in this way so long to us. It's the society, the, the fire of it have died down a little bit. Oh no, oh, no. But when you go back and search these things out, what he really saying? For him to deliver you. From Christmas. Oh God. Yeah. Oh God. It was that's what and I use that word not like deliverance. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what a lot of my family like to hit me with. Especially since I got children. They don't do it. 
I didn't want to tell my kids. Man, when the, your daddy used to do it. Uh -huh. I, my kids come say, I don't know they come back home and talk to me. Quit the state. I remember when your daddy used to do it. Well, your daddy used to do a lot of things. And they're going to continue to do some things. And they were wrong. <laughs> that don't mean he should stay with it. He should stay with it when he find out it's wrong. Right. See, the, lo the logic. I did a lot of things. Huh? I used to break windows out the house. <laughs> I used to torture the cat. I used to do a lot of I used to do a lot of things that you told me not to do. So your logic is I still should be doing those things. I shouldn't have left them alone. But praise y'all did when I found out it was wrong. And that's what I'm trying to tell you that this in the sight. Oh yeah, the sight of the Lord. See, I, that's what the that's what part of the lesson was. It was why not Israel. The brother had a comment this week. He was we talked about it. I told him I was gonna get on it if I had a chance. But as I thought of the title, it isn't why Israel shouldn't celebrate Christmas. It's not why the black man shouldn't celebrate Christmas. The title the Almighty gave the meditation, I believe he gave me is why no one. Did you hear me? No one. Huh? Yes, sir. That's why when they say on my job, hey, Merry Christmas, Israel. No. 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 Oh. Why? Sit yeah. down. <laughs> Merry Christmas, OG. You know. <laughs> what? Took the hot box bus yesterday. Because I told her, I said, I don't, I don't celebrate Christmas. See how, and we putting people on the bus, loading them up. See how far the bus. Wait a minute. <laughs> what, what, what's, so what's up? You, your kid, what's up with your kid? I said, they don't. I said, yeah, I'm old as if you ever been here, you did it from. I ain't gonna say that. He ain't did it from shit. Ask him if he listen. Yeah. See, and then when you start rationalizing with him, well, well, every day is Christmas. I say, well, yeah, if every day is Christmas, then why are you making a big deal out of this one then? All right. <laughs> <laughs> if every day is, right. then why you make such a fuss out of this one? See, we try to. It's like us. We all got our things that hunt us. We all coming out of something. And we got things when we do it's what we want to do. Like I said, going back to what's right and what's wrong. We try to rationalize while we keep doing what we want to do. Huh? Y'all looking at me like I'm the only one to go. Go ahead, bro, right? Go ahead. Go ahead. You right? Yeah. Well, the truth comes that's on. What think, that's what I think. They rash when you confront them. They say, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Hmm? Y'all want to get down to the nitty gritty? Yes, sir. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Well, let's see. Well, they say, now, what is Christmas, Xmas, what is it really supposed to be about? The birth of the Huh? No, I, believe, I'm, I'm, I stay in the words of fire. I stay in the words of my grandbaby. Because he told me. He told me he said Christmas is for him to get presents. So well, you can have a whole bunch of toys well, you can play with. That's the <laughs> Well that's the wise answer. And that's what he told me. <laughs> that's the wise answer. But what's the what's the answer that we get? No, that ain't the answer. Supposed to be the birth. So above all, and I'm asking that because when we list why we do things, see, when you ask an Israelite why you keep the Sabbath day, she'll be able to give you good reason. He's nice, be able to give you good reason. Not only just law, he should be able to go and show you. Because on the seventh day, six day Yahweh created everything. On the seventh day, what we read earlier, he stopped. He rested, he stopped, he ceased creating. 
He blessed the Sabbath day, sanctified the Sabbath day, hollowed it out, consecrated, set it up. So we do it because it's what he desired. Oh, God. When you ask him if you could, when they would ask you, why do you keep a Passover? If you could in this land, when they ask you, why do you keep a Passover? See, this is what God did when he gave us days. He said, well, you tell your son, this is why we do it. Because on that night, we passed through the land of Egypt, passed over our houses, killed all their firstborn, and he spared us. Oh, we give God. rhyme and reason. That's right. Because it ain't nothing like doing something, and you can't give rhyme and reason. That's right. You ask the children, why do you do that? And they stand there and look at you. You don't know what makes it matter. The fact they can't tell you why they did it or the fact that they did it. <laughs> but the ones start making you even more mad. You hear me talking to you? You just start shouting. They still look at you. Go to your room. And then you bring them out the room. An hour later, you still might ask, why did you do that? I know because I was a king. <laughs> why did you do that? And you, they still ain't got no answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> but the Almighty said well, everything that we did we should be able to go <coughs> why are you eating that bread you sitting on your job eating a little funny little bread uh -huh. somebody come up man what is it you don't let bread bread don't have no man why are you eating that <laughs> sit down <laughs> huh? seven days commanded to because this is what we did when we came out of whether they agree or not, they at least have yeah. your well, reason. <laughs> There's a reason behind. It. Why do you do Christmas? Uh, it's for the kids. Yeah. It's for the kids. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, it's for the kids. They give you everything. Yeah. They give you everything. But most of the time, not what they're supposed to give you is not what they give you. That's right. Yeah, like you said, for the kids. I tell my kids, no one's a problem. I'm about your friend. Oh, because this way. I said, but I thought if you take all the presents away, take all the eggnog away. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's right. Take all the hands. Take all the Carolyn away. <laughs> Do you still have Christmas? Because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be when you take all that away. The gifts, Neiman Marcus, Gucci, huh? Coach Badge, because that better be 55 screen TV, because that better be what comes in the door. Mm -hmm. And like I said, don't go to Dollar Tree. <laughs> Coming in the door with a bunch of gifts from Dollar Tree, you're gonna be cussed out and not face to face when you leave. That cheap, the next year, don't nobody invite him over here. Dollar Tree, what is this? And they hand tomorrow at the Salvation Army uh, tomorrow, and they hand the day at the Salvation Army tomorrow. But you take all that away. Is it still Christmas? And for many of people, no. What it's supposed to be about Christ. <laughs> but how can it be about Him when this ain't even the time of year He was born? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's not something I'm making up. We can improve it. It's right in your book. And who in here celebrates my birthday is in this month? Who here would come to my birthday party if I threw it in May? <laughs> and think I would have my right mind. Y'all say that bud is crazy. We just said we got a party. Who do you know <laughs> celebrates their birthday out of the time? That is easy. That is easy. That's right. <laughs> huh? <laughs> well, that's 
Let's go on there. Let's oh, see. Lord, get ready, get ready, get ready. And the reason why I say this, see, that's why the Almighty said, and that's why I said it, it's not a day nobody should keep. Because oh, no man can justify <laughs> black, white, Chinese, fall out the sky purple. Can't be justified. And before we go and prove that this is not even the time of year, for our people who follow Christ and will regard him, see, there's two reasons why you no man should keep it. If you really love the Lord and you're a child of God, you shouldn't keep it. And then if you follow Christ, you shouldn't keep it. Now, why do I say if you follow Christ, you shouldn't keep it? Oh, book of Revelation. See, this is, see, when they be inviting me to Christmas, I say, well, if I come, you know what's getting ready to go down. Well, you stay at home. I'm not bringing no gifts in the box. <laughs> I'm bringing the gift of life. But y'all don't want that one. That wrecks the party. Don't you see, I'm trying to get my buzz on yeah, right. <laughs> and get my itis. <laughs> that new egg. You know what I'm talking? <laughs> Somebody send him home. <clears throat> well, let me show you. If you love the Lord, whose name is Yah, Hallelujah. You love God, you definitely shouldn't be messing with it. So I'm gonna show you what he said. But if you're a follower of Christ Himself, you shouldn't be messing with it. You got Revelation, brother? Yes, sir. Revelation. Let's look there. 22. Hallelujah. So remember, we were talking about the Garden of Eden, talking about the new, new world, how your mind going to cleanse it, and all the goodness in the new world. Uh -huh. huh? Yes, sir. I want you to see something in Christ is reputed of uh, the New Testament is reputed the same. And it's the bottom line. Revelation 22. Yes, sir. Let's verse 14. Hallelujah. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they. Did it say they cursed, did he? No. Huh? Y'all talk to me no, now. No, he didn't. He said blessed. What did he say? Blessed he or said, they blessed that do his commandments. They like to tell you about the Sabbath day. They like to tell you about how to eat right. They like to tell you about how to dress right. Blessed, not only tell you, but they do it. They keep it. They do it. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. That they may get the slip with the right says you have the right to the tree of life. What tree? The tree of eternal life. Oh, you've earned God. the right. You've earned the degree. Like a degree, you've earned the right to the tree of eternal life. And he said that's the blessing that come today to do his commandments. And may enter in through the gates into the city. And they may go into that city, the holy Jerusalem. Which he saw descended earlier in the book. He saw descended out of heaven, not ascended. That's why even when JC taught his disciples and apostles how to pray, he said, Our Father, whose heart is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because he never taught a doctrine where we go up. Oh, God. That was Paul's creation. He taught a doctrine where the Almighty comes down and the saints come to him and meet him down on earth. For without our dog. He said, but if you don't get the right to go into the city and you don't get the right to the tree of life, you're going to be on the outside. And who's on the outside? Watch it now. For without our dog. They're dogs. <laughs> and sorcerers. Huh? Dogs. Mm. Sister, y'all know what a dog is because y'all call them a lot of brothers at all times. So you know what a dog is. They're dogs on the outside. Go ahead. 
And sorcerers. Yes, sorcerers. Ooh. Huh? Put a spell on you. <laughs> sorcerers. And whoremongers. Uh oh, brothers. <coughs> Can't have whores. Without whoremongers. Without a whoremonger. Uh oh. And huh? murderers. Huh? So I think you play a player from the Himalayas, you, you <laughs> might want to rethink that one. Because you'd be on the outside of the city. Huh? That's right. There's also who out there? Murderers. There's murderers. And idolaters. And idolaters. And whosoever. Now watch this last part. Whosoever loves it. And whosoever loves. And make it a lie. And make up lies. <laughs> So if you're in love with lies and you make up lies, when that new Jerusalem come down, I want people to understand this, what he said right here. If you love the lie, then even if you didn't make it up, if you love it, that you can't let it go. Mm. You gotta tell the story. And if you're the author of it, <laughs> there ain't no room for you in New Jerusalem. There ain't no room for you in the kingdom of Yah. There you go. So now, why are you thinking on Christ's mass? And you're thinking on December 25th. Let's see if it's the truth. Because there's this place in the book that devil is a lie. Well, you a lie, and the truth ain't in you. So we got to see if the truth ends. But don't try and condemn Brother Aaron for not serving this day. When you don't even know, and that's another reason why I'm going to use your Savior against you. That's another reason why he said, ye worship. What you know not, but we know what we worship. For salvation is of Yehuda Dean. Another reason why I said many of you will say, Rabbi, Rabbi, you'll come to me and you'll say, I'll tell you, depart from me. I don't know you, you workers of iniquity. Because you did not learn to do the will of my father who's in heaven. And I'm showing, we're going to show that this thing is not the will of the father who's in heaven. It's a lie. And the truth <coughs> ain't it. Let's go to Luke. There's only two genealogies. In the New Testament. Matthews is one. Luke is the other. Now I'm going to tell you something. There was a child born in December. There was a child born in December. But let's see who that child was. We got time? Huh? We got time? <coughs> well, we got to start. We don't know in the detail, but we got to start. Let's go, brother. Come on. Yes, sir. Let's go. Chapter Luke. 1, verse 1. I don't think y'all mind. Luke, chapter 1. Let's Ooh, go. Verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. He said, for as much. And many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely, which are most surely, positively believed among us. 
who follow Christ. We believe this. And many people have tried to record this and write it down. I'm recording the version of the story now. That's what he's telling you. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having investigated carefully all things from the very beginning, to write them unto thee in order, O oh, most excellent Theophilus. So in other words, this is Luke's letter to a man named Theophilus about the birth of Christ. Not even to a nation. Now, what is he clearing up here? Because it's got to be cleared up. Because he's saying, I'm writing you the way I got it. Because that's what happened. I got it from somebody. I've heard it through the grapevine. Because I wasn't an apostle. I wasn't a disciple. I am Luke, the physician, who met a man named, and I don't even know none of them, the only person I know, believe it or not, Theophilus, the only person I know, because I'm the physician, is Paul. That's what we know. He's a companion of Paul. He's a physician. So what he has, we got to clear this up, make this clear. What he Luke has here is what they call in court hearsay. <laughs> somebody told somebody who now told you. But the facts in that between that he told me because she told him the facts of the story can get a little twist. twisted. Yes, sir. But that's what you have. You have a loop that's far removed from what's original. That's why he said, by our witnesses and ministers of the word, meaning people who were there. Now, Matthews, that's the one you probably want to lean to because he was a legitimate apostle. But Luke was not. But we got to go with Luke's. We're going to go with Luke's account. To Theophilus. Huh? Don't let name them kids Theophilus, boy. <laughs> that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judah, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Avia, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they, now watch this now, and they both were righteous before the Lord, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Or in other words, he was saying these two people were perfect. Something I thought man couldn't be. Not only did he say this man was perfect, he said the woman was perfect. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. Does this sound like a Something does this sound like something that we heard before? Huh? Yeah. That they well stricken in years yeah. and don't have no child. Yeah. Does this does this sound like somebody? Yeah. Huh? Oh, I digress. I digress. Oh, Luke, what you doing? What you doing to me? Let, let's go. And according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple. Of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. You see that incense? What we be saying about burning it? He burned it. People was outside while he burned it, praying. They say it was all burning. He burned it as his service of a priest. 
And there appeared unto him the angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now we know that that's not right. Because the main reason why you go in and you burn altar on the incense is so that the high priest couldn't see nothing. That's why Aaron had to burn it. So that it fumigated the room so that he could see the Almighty when he came down upon the mercy seat. All I had to do is read what the Almighty, what he did in uh, Deuteronomy on the day of atonement. Thing is around 16 chapter. And that was one of the essential things he must do is burn the incense so that it fills up the room. And when Zechariah saw that he was troubled, fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. <laughs> yeah, call him John, John boy. And thou shall have, now watch this, now watch this. And you shall have joy and gladness, and many shall, and many shall rejoice at his birth. At whose birth? John. At John's birth, you shall have joy and gladness, and many, y'all getting this? Y'all yeah. getting this? Yeah. Yes, sir. Y'all getting this? Yes, sir. Because I can stop now. Yes, sir. I can stop. But y'all yes, getting sir. this? At John birth, there should be joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Can't say that about his cousin. <laughs> Total opposites. <laughs> and he should be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why he could be filled with it, because he didn't have nothing perverting him. And he should be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their Elohim. And he shall turn, excuse me, he shall turn many. The Lord their Elohim, their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit of power of Elijah. See, that's why JC said, I told you Elijah did come back in the form of John the Baptist. See, this is that's why he told them that. See, they, they family. You're gonna find out a lot, they family. And you see what he's saying here, he should go forth in the spirit and the power of Elijah. So now they got the people thinking that Elijah came back in the form of John the Baptist to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready the people prepared for the Lord. I don't think that that's happened. Zechariah said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do to Gabriel? <laughs> I am Gabriel, huh? It's just like Islam. The angel Jabril. That's who told they, they just want to lie on Gabriel all over the place, don't they? I am the angel Gabriel that stand in the presence of the Lord. And I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee the glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things be performed, because thou believe not my words. So as if he punished him, if you don't believe what I'm telling you, you're going to be dumb and can't speak about it till the day it happens. But you didn't believe me. Now, even the Almighty didn't do that to Abraham. Or Sarah, he asked her why. She laughed, but he didn't say, "Look, you're gonna be dumb and you can't speak because you didn't believe me." He didn't tell because he knew he knew that more they mortal men and women, and he talking about you old, ninety and hundred. You can have a baby. Yeah, I'm, he was seventy years old now, there, and you see it on news. Yeah, she pregnant with a baby. He'd be laughing. Hi, oh, look, look at that. You fifty. They'll laugh at you. He just not having a baby living in his old tail. <laughs> They'll laugh you to shame. I go home and tell my mom the other day. Y'all have no baby. They'll laugh me to shame. 
<laughs> Why something wrong? It's all dirty. I don't know what they that they're talking about me. I already know. Yeah, you already know. So the Almighty know this. So they weren't gonna punish nobody because they had those human kind of passions. But here, because he have a look, yeah, you're gonna be you can't speak. You're gonna be dumb. You can't speak about it. Till it happens. <laughs> Come on, man. Because I believe it not my words, which should be fulfilled in this season. And the people waited for Zechariah and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. See, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. He can't even tell. Talk to him. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his administration were accomplished, he departed to his own house, meaning his obligations, his duties. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, She's saying, huh? She hid. Most women I know that looking for a child, they, they don't hide themselves. They find out they're pregnant, they want everybody to know. They be walking down the dollar with a little shine. Don't even have no block belly no more. They be rubbing on it. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Come on, tell the devil, tell you, I'm pregnant. He starts sweating bullets. But they tell everybody. But she is. Thus have the Lord dealt with me in the day when he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Now watch this. Now, here's where you start making some highlights. This 26th verse. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from the Lord unto the city of Galilee, named Nazareth. I like that. Circle it, ask me, whatever you want to do. In the sixth month. So, first question. About around what time was the six months? Can somebody tell me? Anybody? Somebody? Huh? No, around what time? What what corresponding month? That, what corresponding month that we know of today? Hopefully, the day of atonement. Oh, I know. Well, whose Gregory. calendar should we be using? Yeah, calendar. So That's right. It's in the sixth month. So, so in the sixth month, that'd be around what time? That'd be coming close to the seventh month. We'll be back. Be something. Well, I'll help you. I'll help you. It would be around, more than likely, it would be around. September, because remember, remember the seventh month corresponds with around the end of September. September going into the beginning of, that's how our calendar falls. See, this is the thing. <coughs> this is why people, this is why people have a disadvantage. Like I said, when you start in the back of the book, because now you have even disregarded the way you should see things. Your view is already skewed because you know not the word of Yah. So you know not time and season. This only makes sense when you understand time and season. The sixth month, how the children of Israel correlated the sixth month. By the word of Yah. And that will put you around September. I want y'all to get this so y'all when y'all start showing people. September. So in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel went to Galilee of Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. There we go again. Who's of the house of David? Joseph. Joseph. And the virgin's name was Mary. And now Gabriel went to her and said unto her, the angel came in and said unto her, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with you, and blessed are you among women. 
And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Miriam, for thou hast found favor with the Lord. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and call his name J.C. Thank you. There you go, sisters. Now, yeah, see, that's the mind. I, that's the mind I want. So watch this. Now we done read about John. Right. And when John's supposed to be great, right. huh? But watch this. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, which we just cleared that up because David is not his father. His lineage is not of David. And he shall reign over the house of Yaakov forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Miriam unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee. That holy thing. <laughs> I'm not making this up. That holy thing. Which shall be born of thee. Shall be called the son of the Lord. Brother, we're chuckling like I know of, boy. <laughs> that ain't that something. Now watch this. He said, behold, your cousin. Elizabeth. <laughs> now you wonder why John the Baptist knew Christ when he came, when he was at Jordan, dumb people, and Christ came to the Jordan. You wonder why he knew people always went, oh, he just saw him and he recognized because he's holy. No, he didn't. He recognized because that's his cousin. They family. He always knew him. He said, here come my cuz. <laughs> and he come to baptize you. I was doing it in the water. He come to, they always had this, and by this narrative, you see they always had this in their mind. He played the role where he thought he was what? Elijah. Yeah. And Christ would come and play the role where he thought he was who? Oh. No. The Messiah. David. Right. And David right. said. Because right. Elijah must come before Yah come. And when Yah come, Yah come. And when he come, come also our Messiah, King David. So they had this all their life. From childhood, they had this going on. Probably played like that. I'm Elijah. I'm David. You know how little kids play? Role play. And they stuck with them. They got older. I'm from role play. I'm Elijah. Turn the hearts of the, watch this. And he was a preacher. I could teach him. He was a preacher. He had a follower. Christ ain't the only one that had apostles. He had a mass following. They speak on when he got arrested. They fell out because they had no shepherd. But he had a mass flock before Christ even came on the scene. But he told us, verse 36, he said, Behold, our cousin Elizabeth. She also conceived a son of her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. So he came to marry him in the sixth month, which is what month? Correlate with what month? And now Elizabeth is in her sixth month. So in what month? See, six months. Right. And how about how long does it take y'all to carry daughter the time? No. Huh? Good. The math going to see it's going to click. The math going to click. Watch this. Let's keep reading. And Miriam said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to the word. And the angel departed from her. And Miriam arose in those days and went to the hill country with haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zechariah. And saluted Elizabeth. So she came in the house and she saluted her, spoke to her. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutations of Miriam, that the baby leaped in her womb. Who baby leaped? 
Elizabeth. Elizabeth baby. And so John, he leaped in the womb when he heard her, her, her talking. He got the phone. Woo. Couldn't control himself. He's leaping all over the place. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She even got filled with the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth, that's the she, she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. So I won't see if y'all stand with me now. We know Elizabeth is six months pregnant, right? And it correlates with the month of September. Now, she, now, what's her name? Man, then came over there and she's speaking to her. And while she's speaking to her, baby's leaping. Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth say to her cousin, Hey, blessed are thou among women, you highly favored. And the fruit of your womb is blessed. So, Miriam is what? In September, Miriam is what? Pregnant. Pregnant. That's why she told me, your womb is blessed. Because she said, Yo, you're pregnant. So, keep, see, this is key. In the sixth month, she's pregnant. And when is this to me that the mother of my Elohim, mother of my God, should come to me? You see what she's saying? For lo, as soon as the voice of our salutation sounded in my ear, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in the Elohim of my Savior. For he had regarded the lowest state of his handmaid, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And that's why in the church, they got her up there Mary. with Hail Mary, Mother of God, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. I know that I did it for you. Guys. For he is mighty that have done great, that have done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. I have none problem with what she's saying here. He shows strength with his arms and has scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. He had put down the mighty from the seat and exalted them from a low degree. He had filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he had sent away empty. He had helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seeds forever. Now, watch this. Circle this, asterisk this, highlight this. And Miriam abode with her, with who? Elizabeth. If she stayed with Elizabeth for about what? Three months. Three months. Now, let's get us three months from around September. Let's get us three months. Y'all ready? Yeah. Ah. No. <laughs> yes. Hello? <laughs> On the back. Whatever else I got to do. <laughs> Three months from that six month. Three months. October. November. Ladies and gentlemen. December. Who was born in December? John. John. John the Baptist. Going by the book. Going by the book. Going by the book. Now, these are three months. And in the sixth month, Mary, all this went down where the angel came to her, where she conceived, where she pregnant. So in December, Mary is only how many months, brother and sister? One. One month? No. Who said it? She's three. When she leaves. Uh, she's pregnant. 
December. 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 Right, right. This is when it all went down that she fully could see. Because remember, right. she go in and get a salutation. Elizabeth saying, You got a child in there, he blessing all this. Right. Now, three months later, or you can say four. Right. But she's not over that. No. This is the month of conception. So she's carrying here. See, one, two, three, four. But it's going to put her way out of the range of getting back to here. She was born a preemie. Little preemie in the history of the world. They had him in the incubator. That's why them three, that's why them because three wives. We count, because we count now. We count now if she's, let's say four. We count now, give her five more months from here. What's that? January. January. February. March. April. May. And that's why, and that's why, because see what they do is they say, nobody knows it's that day. But this is why the shepherds would have been out in the field. Right. With a flock. Because it's May. It's the turn of the year. Or a little bit after that. Because we know in our calendar, the turn of the year is around April. April. Latter March, early April. Yeah. Everything is given birth and come full fledged. So now the shepherds are out and they out watching their flock because they're in that part and in that season. And that's why they would have been out. Hallelujah. I done lost y'all. Hallelujah. 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 And like I said, it depends on how you want to break this down. We're going to either put him around May, or we're going to put him around April, or if you want to push it out, we're going to put him around June. But we definitely ain't going to get him close to this. I'm going to say it was closer to April. They we definitely ain't going to get him close. Well, I'm going to say it's closer to April, too, and there's a reason why I'm going to say it's closer to April. If you go to Luke, the second chapter. Is it Luke 7? No, Luke 2nd chapter. Second. Luke chapter 2. I'm going to tell you why it's closer to April. But like I said, if you don't start off with the word of Yah, see, I want y'all to know this. Because like I said, the days are coming where we just can't tell people, I don't celebrate this. That's the, that's the white man day. And all that, that's, 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 we ain't that ain't good enough. We're gonna have to start giving it. Like I said, the reason why we do do things, give the same reason why we don't. We're gonna have to start educating our people if they want to have that conversation. Not oh, just God. put it off like this, ain't it? Show them. Oh God. Hopefully something click. Show them. But I'm gonna show you why it's closer to the turn of the year. You got Luke second chapter? Yes, sir. Go to the first verse. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days mm -hmm. that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David. Now, otherwise, in other words, this is a census. This is a census in which the account for people must be taken. And the account of people and the account 
of the census, which was labored and put on them, it was done in the new portion of the year. Not as the year was going out. They laid the census on people as the year came in. And that's why I said I could put it around the time of the new year. Because that's the time that he and Miriam, when she finally delivered, went up to be part of the census. To be enrolled. And they took the child with them because everybody of his household had to be there so they could be enrolled. They could be counted. And look at where did you stop at, brother? Let's stop right there at verse 5. Keep going. Down to 8. To be taxed with Mary was his spouse's wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son mm -hmm. and wrapped him in swallowing cloths mm -hmm. and laid him in a manger mm -hmm. because there was no room for them in the inn. And let me tell you something. Let that bad boy real insulated. He was going to freeze because it does get cold in Israel. And if it was dead winter, because that's why David even had what he called a winter house. It gets cold in Jerusalem. It gets cold in Israel. And if he was just out there giving birth in his birthday suit mm -hmm. and it's cold, little, little boy was going to be freezing. And the first thing they do, babies, when they take them out, they put them under that little hot light. They pop, boop. They take them right from you, run them over there, put them in that little hot light. Then they wrap them, then they bring them back, and then they put them in the mother's bosom. Because you got to get them, you got to get them what? Warm. Warm. Heat. They come out in them cold rooms, and the room be cold, so you got to heat them up, get them warm, circulating the blood and everything. Then they wrap them and they hand them back. Well, you wasn't faced with that because you was in the turn of the year when things was, when the climate, when the atmosphere was more conducive where he could be out because it was warm and it wouldn't adversely affect him. Then she wrapped him in swallowing clothes, laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the what? In the end. And there would not be no room for him in the end because at the beginning of the year, everybody fled to this place for the census. And at the beginning of the year, still, even with Roman rule, what happens at the beginning of every Hebrew year in our first month? Passover. Passover. Where he, and it's going to come full fledged where when he is crucified, he seeks to go to Jerusalem and he can't find a place. Because the city is full at Passover. And there's no room for it. And then verse 8. And there it. was in the same country mm -hmm. shepherds, shepherds abiding in the field. Abiding in the field. Keeping watch keeping over their flock by night. By night. And it's, got, and it's warm when you keep watch over your flock by night. Because nobody, I know you can go right now, you can drive to any farm and it's getting ready to close out and the temperature's gonna drop. No person in their right mind is gonna have their flock outside tonight or any other night during the winter time. What flock you do have? Because at this time, you, your flock is probably very small because you sheared them, you killed off a lot of them for the winter time. Yeah. You have a big flock when the season come up and new life come and the, they coming out and they having babies. Now you have a lot to tend to. I'm going to 
would stop right there. Did this was this too much? <laughs> yeah, I, I see heads busting all over the place. You know yeah. how that New Testament do, boy. <laughs> I saw heads just rolling, Jack. They just swimming like, ah. Get out of that any, any questions? <laughs> no, I just, I only did that because I want you to be able to give the knowledge. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Two, that's two different ways. Mm -hmm. Two different ladies. Yes. This Elizabeth and this Mary. And these are two and this is a, a two different Joseph. They try to use. Or is this the same Joseph? With that. This is Isaac and Jack. With uh No, this is not the same Joseph of the Old Testament. Okay. No, no, no. This is another Joseph. That's this is a whole other Joseph. Yeah, okay, that's what I had. This Joseph that Matthew chronicled his lineage 14 from Abraham, 14 from David, 14 from the Canaan waves. This is that Joseph. Okay. Any other questions? But what we do know, what we have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, is that we can cross off December 25th. Remotely having anything to do with anything. <coughs> and you telling me he's the reason for the season. Yeah. Well, I'm just showing you that the season then is gone. Like B.B. King said, the thrill is gone. Because you cannot get him in this season. So what are you, now we got past that because the Almighty wanted me to deal with, I believe he gave it to him. We're going we're gonna to deal with this in faith. I wanted to show that because like Alicia said, you go in the dark with the light so you can bring people out of the dark. We had to go in the dark place with the light. So now let's pull them. Let's see if they grab our hand. If they'll grab your hand and with the light, you can take them out. Because now let's see if this will make much more sense to them. Having debunked the myth that he could have been anywhere near December 25th. Now let's see why December 25th is so high. On your docket. Let's see why this is the chosen date. And to see why, let's go to the prophet. And like I said, this ain't for just us. This is for anybody. Remember, the title is why nobody should celebrate Christmas. And the first reason, let's go to Jeremiah, the first chapter. Oh, yeah. See, Jeremiah wasn't just a prophet to Israel. Let me show you who Jeremiah was a prophet to. Go to Jeremiah, the first chapter. He was an Israelite. He came to Israel. But Jeremiah was a Jeremiah prophet to more than just one. Israel. So when Jeremiah spoke, he was speaking to more than just Israel. Look at who he was speaking to and look at who he was called to be a prophet to. Jeremiah, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Verse number four, brother. Then the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying. Jeremiah said, as an older man, he said, then the word of Yah came unto me, saying. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before I even put you in your mother's belly. Before I even put you. Huh? Yes, sir. See, La, let that marinate. Because, see, people born in life with purpose. That's all right. This proves it right here. Now, maybe you're not born to be a great prophet. Maybe you're not born to be a great singer. You're not born to be American Idol. But whatever you're born, if you have blood in your veins and you're breathing, you have a purpose somewhere, somehow you have a place in this life. And this proves it because the Almighty told him, before I even put you in your mother's Belly, I knew you. How do you know it? His thought. Let me form this man. 
Let me form this young fella. I've seen his life. I know what he's going to do. Let me form him. Now, let me put him in the belly of his mother. Because people run around. It's important to know because people are running around, and that's why they lose cannons, because they think they have no purpose. They think they have no place. There's a fella just quit playing football because the mental illness that he suffered from is greater now than the football that he played. He can't even play that because the mental illness is crippling. Well, he ain't the only one. This world, if you let it lean on you that much, it can take you to that place where you feel like you don't have a place and you don't matter. But you matter. Almighty said even another week, he told Pharaoh, he said, I created you for the day that you would resist me. Even of him. He said, I created the good for the day of my glory. I created the evil. For the day of my destruction. Everything that I do have a purpose. I'm not. I do nothing in vain. So he told Jeremiah. Before I formed thee in the belly. I knew you. Before you came out of the womb. I had already sanctified you. Meaning made. Consecrated you. Made you something holy. And I had already ordained you. Before you can even talk. Before you even open your eyes, all oh, this is he throwing you. I've ordained you a prophet, not just to Israel, but to nations. So when this man spoke prophecy, he didn't speak prophecy just to one nation. He spoke prophecy to nations. That's why his book is so long. That's why you're going to see him deal with Ammonites. Edomites, Moabites. You're going to see him conversing with nations because that's what he was sent to do. Talk to nations. Prophesy to nations. And then Jeremiah said, but I said, I cannot. Ah, yeah. Behold, I cannot speak. I'm a child. But Yah said unto me, say not I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I will send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, you shall speak. Hmm? Out the mouth of babes. And he told them as a young man, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, said Yah. And Yah put forth his hand, and he touched my mouth. I wasn't a great prophet because I was most studious, because I sat there and I studied the most hours. I was the prophet of Yah doing the work of Yah because he put his hand out and he touched my mouth for this consecration. And he said, behold, I put my words in your mouth and see, I have set thee this day over what? Nations. With an S. And over what? Kingdom. With an S. <clears throat> to root out. To root it out. And to pull down. To pull it down. And to destroy it. To destroy it. And to throw down. To throw it down. To build. To build. And up. to plant. And to plant. That's what Prophet Jeremiah was sent to do. Now let's go to 10. So when he's speaking to 10, not only is he speaking to Israel, he, this is a message as a prophet to nations. As a tear down, as a rooter out, as a destroyer, as a puller down. <laughs> Jeremiah 10, chapter, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaking unto you, O house of Israel. He's speaking this unto us because he wants us to get it. But he wants us to get it because he's about to, what he's speaking is about to condemn all nations. Thus said Yahweh, mm -hmm. learn not the way of the heathen. Don't learn the way of heathen. 
And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Y'all know Aunt Esther used to love that word, didn't she? You old heathen. Uh, uh, that's an old school term. You ain't nothing more heathen. That's what they call you. You ain't nothing more heathen. And they don't know they have heathenistic practices sitting in church. That's what they're talking about. If you don't know y'all. That's what he said as a heathen. I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about, but that's what he's classifying as a heathen. They, they run around to ain't nothing old oh, heathen. They don't heathen this itself. Wait a minute. What, what are you doing? Because that's what he's saying. Nations don't learn their ways. And those nations he called them heathens. Go ahead. He said, don't learn their ways. Learn not the way of the heathen. Mm -hmm. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Now, don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. Now, what's one of the signs of heaven? So, that's that's going to go along with this December Sorry. 25th. Sorry. Sorry. No. You want to know what the sign of heaven was? The sign of heaven. One of the signs of heaven here is that the sun during this time went away. Yes. And it went away so quick and it was not with the people of wrong. Scandinavia, of Germany, of Great Britain, or Britannia, of the north, the upper, very, very cold regions. It was not with them. So one of the signs of heaven is. Now watch this. They believe that it left and it was not coming back. <laughs> Did y'all hear me? <laughs> they were like Hall Noakes. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. She gone, and she ain't coming back. <laughs> they was dumbfounded because y'all had not spoken to them. They did not, and don't get mad. This is all, nothing I'm saying. You can't go and pull up and find this out. This is, they got documentaries about it. But they were so broken that they thought it was gone. And we're not coming back. They thought the sun had burned. They down. thought the sun, no, they just thought it wasn't coming back. Uh. Well, the Almighty had already told us. See, this is what I'm saying. The book, he had already told us. I created what? The great life. Yeah. The greater life. The ruling day. The lesser life. The ruling night. And the stars. And, and they should be for signs, seasons, seasons, seasons days, days, and years. So we never walked around when we saw that the days were short and saying, oh, the sun gone. Ooh, it ain't coming back. We got to coax it to come back. We got to make rituals and festivals to make it come back. Because the Almighty already hipped us how the world turned. Y'all laugh. <laughs> but other people didn't know what y'all did. So when it went away, they were mortified. Horrified. So they started coming up with festivals. They started coming up with things. All this was what they call the winter solstice, which today is this in their calendar is December what? 23rd. 20, 23rd to the 25th. 22nd, today. 22nd, 25th. So yesterday was the win, was 21st, which was the official day of the winter solstice. Right. Now watch this. This is what's pitiful. But like I said, if you don't know, y'all this won't mean nothing to you. They said yesterday. Or today is the first official day of winter. Wow. <laughs> How brother, I'm, I'm sitting at the news and the man said, today is the first day of winter. Six minutes, six minutes to be the and I said, I said, good gracious life. 
You blessed. Y'all should clap again. We've been doing it so long, it don't mean nothing to it. We dead to it. You blessed. Y'all don't know the knowledge we get y'all have. They out there talking about the day, the first day of winter, and we've been in the midst of winter for I don't know how many weeks now. We in the midst of winter. When it all is reversing itself, we getting ready to go back to summer. We working our way back to summer. That's why the days after the day, that's why the days are going to start getting longer. And you want to just now tell me we just now started winning. That's why y'all said as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, day and night. Cold and heat, hot, summer and winter. Y'all don't see this word. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's oh manifesting itself. Oh, my God. I'm trying to teach you where we ain't ashamed of what we're doing because it's manifesting this. Who the fool now? That's what we're going to stand there asking one day. Who the fool now? Right. Because as he said, all the wisdom of the wife is going to be thrown down. You want to tell me, first day of winter. We on the downside of winter. That's right. This is what they still don't understand. And this is what they didn't understand then. So around the time of the year, when the solstice, they went out and grabbed what they call and brought in their homes what they call the Yule Log. KFC <laughs> made one. <laughs> the Yule, the Yule Log. And they burnt this Yule Log in their home for 12 days. I know y'all been removed from it. That's yeah. that familiar? Oh, the 12 days of uh, Hello? Yeah, that's right. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two cousins ah. out. One black eye. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit the of Jim Bean. Yeah. <laughs> but they birthed this Yule Law for 12 days. <laughs> this was before the tree. Then when they couldn't burn the Yule log, they made wreaths of evergreen to symbol the circle of what they believe bring back the circle of life. This wreath means bring back the circle. That's why it was hung on the outside of the door, because this was their petition to the fairy world, the make-believe world with fairies and sprites and all this. Little wintry thing. See, <laughs> see y'all been see we've been watching this stuff on TV. Yeah, the gnome. We've been watching this on TV and we just been thinking, oh that's cute. Little Charles Ford, he didn't make that stuff. No, this is what came. This is what he mean by the way of the heathen. This still have meaning amongst wickeds and witches that practice today. They still make this their ritual. So they hung these reeds outside. That's why people hang the reeds outside the door. And it's a circle. You can ask and petition that the circle be brought back. <coughs> Petitioning to the sprites and the fairies and the little people to help. And these gave way to what they call Santa's elves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all stay with me. Bro, they run into you all this morning working on <laughs> Now this, now the tree comes into place because the evergreen in Scandinavian and Norse Lord, the evergreen, it stays strong even through the harshest of winters. It don't die. It's a strong tree. Don't get brittle. So what better Symbol to bring in our homes in this great tree that never die. It's real good. So they cut it, ain't got nothing to do with it. Wrong. So they cut it down and they do exactly what the Almighty said is they march it in their homes. 
All this in their pagan worship. And they fasted. That's right. They fasted. Not with little round discs like we used to have and little screws. Yeah. And, and that time they fastened it right to their floorboards. So that it don't move. And they put a little decoration on the top. The great light singing to bring it back. Now this is what they did. This is what they did in pagan North Country. By Scandinavia. Uh, German. Ancient Germany. Britannia. And ancient North Country. That's what they did. Now at the same time they were doing this. Miles away. They were doing something. In Rome, and they were practicing something called Saturnalia. Well, it was pagan too, because it was in devotion to the god of their pantheon, Saturn. But it was also in devotion to whom they call Soul. Y'all ever heard that term, Soul? S O L. Yeah, it's in the song. Hmm. So, well, that's the that's the Spanish term for sun. So, that's the Spanish word for sun. So, the festival of Saturnalia, dedicated to Saturn, god of fertility, plenteous, plenteousness. Fertility. That's why it was a. That's why it was a orgy. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Christmas Eve of morning. Just, <laughs> huh? Yeah, they give new meaning to Christmas. Just ain't Christmas without the one you love. <laughs> give new meaning to that. They give new meaning to that because it was a pagan. Festival full of orgy. Full of orgies. It was a festival where society was turned upside down. All the poor people for this time got to revel in being upper class. And the upper class people, they brought them down and subjugated them under them. That's where you got caroling from. Because these Pagan or the poor people would go from rich person to rich person's house demanding the goods that they had, the good stuff that they had. And if they didn't, they would stand out and they would sing songs about what they would do to them. They call it trick. See, it looked a lot more like Halloween than it did Christmas. The bells, jingle bells, you rung that because it was chase away darkness. Yeah, chase away darkness. Huh? And then within Saturnalia, you had a festival called Juvenalia. Well, that's where they got the little kids drunk out their mind. What? <laughs> juvenile, 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 juvenile. juvenile. <laughs> now where is it? There you go, yeah. juvenile court, juvenile. Yeah. It's Latin. Y'all, y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. We good. Huh? Y'all, yeah, y'all yeah, done. Yeah. Y'all said this too much like school. That's why my boy ran out of here. He said, I'm going to go on a break. Go on a break. He done ran out. He said, I'm going to go. He said, he got a big packet he brought home. Somebody, we supposed to be on break, Dad. I said, you are. You just got homework. That's all. I'm going to get him a stimulating minute. 
<laughs> I got work. <laughs> I got work. <laughs> you, you got work too. Everybody has got to work. Go on. Buddy. Look at it. There you go. Slide back in. <laughs> And won't use that brain. You do some things you're supposed to shut it down. No. No. <laughs> but juvenile was celebrated during this time. I know it's a lot. Now, where did the Romans get it from? Well, the Romans got it out of ancient, got this practice out of ancient Persia. Because the Persians worshiped the sun god. And that sun god, and so it all tied back together. You see, it's all pagan under the same thing. And that sun god that they worship was this person, was this person called M I T H Mithrod. And Mithrod, his birth, his birthday, ladies and gentlemen, is December 25th. So that's how the people have December 25th. And that's really because it goes back to a Persian false idol that the people are worship. Now, many people say, well, I don't do that. But yes, you are, because you're practicing and doing everything that they were doing. Yes, sir. That's why the Puritans outlawed Christmas when they're coming from England. They haven't already celebrated Christmas in America. It was outlawed at one time. I won't get into all that. Like I said, you can go home and look all this up. Now, as I told my brother, how did this, now let's tie this together. That's why y'all said, learn not the ways of the heathen, be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathens are dismayed at them. Then he said, for the custom of the people is vain. And it is. Once you start to see all this, that's why the question we're asking today, it can be asked back then if we time travel. What does a tree have to do with anything? The sun coming back, regardless of the tree or not. Everything they did is just vain, <laughs> meaning good for nothing, had no purpose. That's why I said it's vain. And mind you now, even though this is taking place, Jeremiah the prophet is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before the modern day Norse people is living. So that lets you know, though, it goes back to first. So that lets you know how long this thing been going. But the Almighty is explicit how these group of people, northern people, Scandinavian people, European people, would operate. One cutting out the tree of the forest with the hands of the workmen, with the axe. They decked it with silver and with gold. Because at first it was with apples. You hung apples on the tree. But apples gave way. That's what made ornaments. The ornaments you hang on the tree was apples. And they fastened with hammers so that it does not move. They are upright as a palm tree. But they speak not. They must need be born. Because they cannot go. So do not be afraid of them. Don't go out by the store when you go into Kroger's. And they got a whole bunch of them. And you... You cross all over the parking lot so you don't have to walk by them. They ain't gonna, <laughs> they ain't gonna mug you. They ain't gonna stick you up. You better watch the cat on two legs, the trees on two legs. That's who you're gonna get you. And don't turn them over. Watch this. I'm gonna turn them all over. Push one, then the whole thing, then the domino effect. Don't just leave the tree be. Let them be. Verse five. They could not go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. 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 Because there ain't nothing to them. And the custom is vain. Because this is all the people are doing. This is what they're doing. Now, how did this get merged? Well, in Rome, 
when Rome conquers, finally conquers into these lands. When Rome finally moves into Britannia, finally moves into Germania, finally moves north into Scandinavia, and they conquer all these people, which you have, may have heard of as Vikings, Norse tribes, instead of fighting with them and telling them what they can't do, how they can't live, they do something ingenious and they tell them, bring it here. Bring it here. Bring it here. So in the fourth century, in the fourth century AD, the church finally says, we accept all of these things. All your pagan customs and all the things we was doing, we just going to blend it all together. And now we'll have a celebratory time. Now, that fulfills another prophecy. That fulfills another prophecy. Hold it. Go to the book of Daniel. And what does that fulfill? Daniel, fifth chapter. See, the church sanctioned all the paganism. That way, it's saying, when in Rome, do it the Romans. Can't beat them, join them. All the they said, why try to fight them? Daniel, Tell chapter them five. Yes. And this is the four beasts. 23rd verse down to the 25th. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 23. But has lifted up, has lifted up thyself against Yahweh of heaven, and they have brought the vessels. I'm of sorry, chapter 7. I'm sorry. Your chapter 7. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your chapter 7. I keep getting my range. Your chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. Different from all other kingdoms. And shall devour the whole earth. Mm -hmm. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand. Until a time, a time and time and, times, and the dividing of time. And the dividing of time. He shall think to change Law. festivals, more deems, the appointed times, and laws. And this is what this is one example right here. And then let me tell you when he said talking about the ten kingdoms, he's talking about the succession, beginning with ancient. Rome, but how Rome would carry on even to this day, because I tied this in for you. The colonials of Jamestown, Virginia. And for a few years after that, did not have on the American calendar, there was not one single holiday. Not one. For the first settlers in Jamestown, Virginia, and the colonies thereafter. They noticed this that there was nothing celebrated, and they instituted. They went back and grabbed, because it was outlawed at this time, they went back and grabbed Christmas and instituted the celebration of it. And then they started putting other things to fill up the calendar so the people would have something. To celebrate, but they grabbed nothing of the most high. They grabbed things that was ancient 
and things that they could make up. And that's why he said they would change time. They would change festivals. And that's why today people don't know the times of Yah. They only know what they've been given. But this, brothers and sisters, and like I said, I know it's a lot, and I know the mind, because I was in school myself, and get bogged down. This is enough to wake up a blind man. This is why the prophet spoke. He said, learn not the ways of the heathen. Because when the Almighty give you and see what it is, it has absolutely nothing to do with nothing. You know, well, I need to buy a gift. Well, you don't need to say this. You don't need to make up all the other stuff that go along with to buy a gift. I want to buy a gift. I bought somebody a gift. I won't come in the house with a flat screen, 60 inch television. Hey, y'all. I want to buy my weapon. I don't need to make up all this other stuff that was made up and give credence to it and revel in it. And I'll close because, like I said to my Christian brothers and sisters, I'll close. Remember what your, what your professed Savior said on the outside of the city will be them that love. And making up <laughs> lies. And by now you can see this ain't nothing but a big, total, preposterous lie. Proven in every way you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any comments? Questions? Question. I have a question, Maury. Mm -hmm. um, how does the uh, the story of Nimrod does that tie into this Christmas celebration? Or well, yes, because he was an ancient son. He was an ancient son worshiper. <clears throat> he was an ancient son worshiper. Yes, sir. They, they use the tree to symbolize his birthday because he's a great father. So you have a great tree to symbolize his birthday. Also. To symbolize his birthday as well, yes. 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 That he would bring the, because they prayed to him, they prayed to him, and, and they prayed to him to bring, and also AP Showtime at the Apollo. Because he rode in the chariot, so they would pray to see it go back. That's why they, Cursey Gray wrote that, the 16th Crucified Savior. They were praying to them because they were all associated with the sun. They prayed to them to bring the sun back to them. That's why this day is called the birth of the sun. But in their term, S-U-N. Later, the church would take it the birth of the sun, S-O-N. <coughs> but their connotation was S-U-N. We want the sun. To come back, it warms, it heats, it brings things out, it, it nourishes. The church grabbed it and said, when they concocted all these schemes and lies, the church grabbed it and said, Yes, the birth of the sun, that's only the highest, the son of the Lord. And I will close with this. Psalm 147. I would, I would think, I would hope y'all would have been happy to be in class today. <laughs> Some not so much. I said, when is this ever going to be over with? Well, it's about to be over in a minute.
147. Hallelujah. Verse 19 and 20, brother. He showed his word unto Yaakov. He showed his word unto Yaakov. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. And remember, he's an Elohim of judgment. He showed them to Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. He have not dealt so with any other nation. And as far as his judgment, and as far as his judgments, they have not known them. They have not known them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. See, so much they don't know about the most high, so much we don't know about him. So it's definitely so much they don't know about him. And what they don't know, they have to make up. That's right. But in that sense, we have to be like Luke, old Theophilus. Let me tell you how it really is. <laughs> Any final comments? Great clam or egg. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Are you done yet? Yes. Would you please sit down? Okay, I'm going to sit down. Too too long. All right. Great clam. Very educational. Did you learn? Yes, I did. That was nice. All right. No. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, we ain't off yet. <laughs> we we gonna get there, bro. You want that all camera? Huh? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. That's all right. All right. Anybody else? Tear that little bug up and get down, get down. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got something to go home and tell my mom. <laughs> yeah, mouthful. They, uh, I tell you what they. I did say one last thing. <laughs> well, y'all can finish that chapter. But I'm going to show you because all of this that you can show to people. And by me, that's why I did what I did. That's why I brought it. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, because the prophet already said it. That's why I said, read this. Go ahead and finish out this whole chapter, because you're going to find some things in there. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 10. But the one thing I found as I got to the end of it was 10 and 23. But watch what he said. Jeremiah 10 and 23. And I had to make this point. He said, oh, yeah. I know that the way of man is not in himself. In other words, for him to walk right, that's not in him. For most people to walk right and do the right thing, it's not in them, believe it or not. They have to be prodded. They have to be pulled. They have to be encouraged. They have to be forced to some degree to do the right thing. And that's what he was saying. He said, I know that for man, to walk. I know that the way of man is not in himself. Leave it to him to do the right thing. It's not in him. It's not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. He oftentimes is going to stumble and bumble and fall. He's going to mess up. He is. He infallible. Like I said, with no rhyme and no reason often. Why you cheat on her? I just saw her. She said hi. Okay. How many other women said hi? That old lady over there said hi. I don't see you trying to hit on her. It's not any. We need help. We need to find help. We need intervention. Then he says, so oh yeah. Let's go back to judgment. Oh, yeah, correct me, but correct me with judgment and not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. So accept his chastise, his correction. 
Because it's to help you. Because if he comes to you with anger, it's to bring you nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all feel good? Hallelujah! This is just 530. Hallelujah! It is 530. 535. Sun down. Sun down. It's going. Sun down. It's, it's the end of the day. It's the end of the day. 525. Yeah. That sounds like a good number. 525. <laughs> Combo. <laughs> Don't let me forget that, huh? <laughs> I think I got dollar and change in the car. Get, that five, five, five. get us some Christmas money. Ah! Let's <laughs> 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 Hey, Shema, Yisrael, Yahweh, Yahweh. Elhenu, Yahweh. 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 Yahweh, Aka, Aka. Here is Yahweh, Yahweh. Elohim, Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh is one. Yibereka, Yahweh, why is Mereka? Yahweh, Yahweh, Peneleka, Wataneka. Yes, I Yahweh Penei Leka, why you sin, Leka Shalom. Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh may make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his kindness upon thee and give thee peace. Hallelujah! 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 Praise the mighty Yahweh. Yah is righteous all the time. Hallelujah. Now let's kick it. Let's click it. <laughs> Young brother said you told me you're gonna tell us you're gonna tell us something after the camera dog. 